When a movie has Merry Christmas in its title, we don't expect to see prisoners of war, malnutrition, people being buried alive, repression of queer desire, bullying, suicide, and yet we also don't expect, as we see in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, a touching display of compassion. Directed by the Japanese filmmaker Nagisa Oshima, released in 1983, set in a Japanese prisoner of war camp on Java, Lawrence, played by Tom Conti, is a British prisoner and at times plays the role of a casual translator between the Japanese army and other British prisoners of war. Hera, played by Takeshi Kitano, is a sort of brutal drill sergeant, though not always threatening in an obvious way, and at certain points reveals an unpredictable generosity. Let's focus in on the relationship between these two in the film. What is compassion? Some speak of it as an elevated form of kindness. Some see it as cheerfulness. Some see compassion as a deep form of listening. The dictionary calls it a sympathetic pity for others' misfortunes. It translates from Latin as to suffer with. The calm part, sort of like compound, two or more, and the passion part simply meaning suffer. The word compassion comes from karuna, which was once described by Thich Nhat Hanh as a doctor that needs to understand their patient's suffering, but can't actually suffer with their patients, for if they did suffer with them, they couldn't help them. So, to suffer with, it doesn't suggest that compassion requires us to cheer up a suffering person. Rather, it's empathy plus a gentle caring action. We feel their pain, and we feel it with them, reducing their loneliness. Compassion could be a deep acknowledgement of what is hurting another, not rushing to solve the hurt or explain it. Consider Buddha's first noble truth, commonly read as, Life is suffering but it's the suffering part where people find variation. Some explain it as life in our traditionally lived way is causing suffering. Some describe it as having a cart with a wobbly wheel. For some of us, it suggests an idea of inherent unfairness or inevitable loss and failure, of which all of us will experience at some point, but for different reasons. It is a noble truth because it suggests honor or maturity may be needed to deeply absorb this truth. Yonoi, played by Ruichi Sakamoto, turns apoplectic at the influence of any vulnerability, any challenges to his inner structure of denial, though at times he also has a spiritual side. The toxic masculinity that Yonoi clings to makes the film itself feel closeted. Remember that in Japan there was a deep history of gay or bisexual love, even among the warrior class of samurai, and it wasn't considered a true problem until efforts for westernization. In the film, authority and discipline are expected, leading soldiers like Yonoi to react with defensive aggression to every conflict. Major Jack Selliers, played by David Bowie, challenges Yunoi in a famous scene by breaking a toxic restriction around intimacy. The canon of queer cinema can sometimes overlook this film, possibly due to its absence of understandable resolutions. Oshima, a radical critic of Japanese culture, is seen as more worried the Japanese youth were forgetting Japan's inhumane war crimes from World War II. Let's return to compassion. How can we be compassionate? What is the film trying to show us? Well, before we can suffer with, we have to know what the suffering is. We must be conscious of what's hurting us or hurting others. We must confront unflinchingly the many manifestations of the first noble truth. We find Lawrence here fighting against reality, 
the reality of his imprisonment, of war's awful consequences, of a lonely, bewildered fate. Although he speaks Japanese, he can't comprehend their quote-unquote gods, as he puts it, their customs. This moment here, confusion and loneliness. Imagine having no clarity as to what is scaring you, and also having no support in that moment, no connection. This here is the true suffering. The camera is positioned up high, showing the space around Lawrence, revealing the distance, the alienation. Years later, Lawrence goes to visit Sergeant Hera, though now Sergeant Hera is a prisoner of war for the Allies. We learn that Sergeant Hera is going to be executed the following day. It's here, when a clarity about war is expressed, that the two are able to suffer together. Clarity and connection. The current losing side and the current winning side are now sharing a pain unique to life on Earth. The grim, heartless conditions of war. This scene feels melancholic when we realize that Lawrence was going to be executed back on the POW camp, and it was a drunken Sergeant Hera that had given a reprieve to Lawrence and Selliers. But in this situation, Lawrence can't return that favor. He can't stop Hera's execution. He can't solve anything. He can't say anything particularly helpful. Lawrence is talking to a man he knows he will never see again. A man that saved his own life. There is nothing to do but to be truly compassionate. <laughs> 